guys, it's Belinda. Welcome back to my channel, my page, Oh Wow, Overcomers with Our Word. Guys, Mother's Day is tomorrow, and I wanted to get this video out to my single mothers. If you recall, back in March, I believe, I put out a post on Facebook that talked about some of us who are on this special assignment, raising, single, raising daughters as single parents like 100% alone without a support system, and I told you then that you may be on a special assignment. I realized I was. So let's talk a little bit today about that special assignment. Today's video is going to be focused on, you know, what is family? There is this spiritual DNA, and then there's our physical DNA. And the physical DNA is actually a very small component of who we are. Our spiritual DNA makes up who we really are. The physical DNA is that that's within our bloodline. The spiritual DNA is that memory of our soul. So guys, if you can see this little visual here, I wanted to show you this. The indigenous world traditions understood that the woman was the gateway between these two worlds. So no matter how you pray and who you pray to, no matter what your faith system is, in order for there to be life from the spirit realm birthed into this natural physical realm we're gonna have to come through this only way this is the reality of it through the womb the gateway of the woman's womb so why is this visual so important it has been said that when a woman is born she will carry she is already birthed with all the seeds that will develop within her 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 eggs rather and when I say seed, I'm probably going to use that interchangeably seed or egg, but I prefer the word seed, that she will already have within her all the seed uh, for the ability to give life. But what's so key about it, and I'll use me for an example. Let's say this was my grandmother, and my grandmother is now pregnant with my mother. My grandmother is now carrying two generations within her. She already has her daughter, my mother, within her womb. My mother being born, what, with the seed for her future generation that will give life to my seed. So if I'm pregnant and carrying my daughter in my womb, I am also carrying forth the next generation. So why is this important? Guys, I didn't have the best childhood, and I'm not here to discuss that because it was all purposeful. It all worked for my good. Whether I thought it was, wasn't, it did. A lot of us, I told you before on another post, we're paying some debts that don't belong to us. And why do I say they don't belong to us? There's some things that are happening in our family lines that we don't understand where they came from. And we tend to look at our immediate family and we'll see situations that we're dealing with. And we're thinking that, oh, this is something that just stemmed with mom or dad. But guys, when you hold on to secrets, when there are things that we haven't worked out, when we haven't forgiven, when we haven't healed, they're going to keep passing on to subsequent generations until somebody takes a turn and says, hey, I want this to stop with me. So what is some of this family karma that gets passed on? These shadows that we're living in. We're looking at abuse, whether it's physical or sexual. We're looking at addiction. We're looking at abandonment. Uh, betrayals, uh, whether the, these are affairs, whether these are abandoning of your spouse, your children. We're looking at certain illnesses that get passed down through family lines, whether they be physical illnesses, emotional, mental. We're also looking at poverty. Poverty is a mindset because how we think about money and those things, we end up raising our children, unfortunately, in the same way. We can't give them what we haven't dealt with and addressed ourselves. And then there's also the violence uh, that may have happened in our family lines. So there's some family karma and debt that if we don't deal with, it's going gonna, it's gonna to keep passing generation to generation. So guys, for me, I didn't have the best childhood. I didn't have a close relationship with my mother. I didn't have the best uh, relationship with my dad. He was a busy man working, but he also suffered with his own shadows that he was living uh, through. My dad was a little bit more vocal than my mother. He often talked about what it was like growing up and the things he desired and didn't get an opportunity to do because of his, the time period within which he was raised. 
and they were still working in the fields. They didn't have an opportunity like we had today to get education. When the season was time to work, they got pulled out of school. So my dad didn't finish his education. He had dreams of also playing uh, basketball. He didn't get to live out a lot of who he thought he was sent here to be. Unfortunately, also with my mother, she was very closed off uh, emotionally, physically. And I can recall even in my elementary years, I would question her about things and she just wouldn't answer. And if my mother thought that on the other end of that question was going to be some sort of uh, dig or, or attack at her or some critique, she definitely wasn't going to answer because her mindset was, I'm not going to allow anybody to ever make me feel guilty about who she was or things she had done. So I didn't get those answers. But your soul guides, the memory that is in your soul, kept telling me otherwise about some questions that I had in my life. Things just weren't like making sense. There are people who, and I'm quite sure you know, like people who've been adopted, they can kind of almost look like, hmm, I know this is my family, this is all I've ever known, but something in their soul will tell them something about it doesn't feel right. Your soul is that part of you that will never lie to you. It is that space that will always come to you from that pureness of what you came into this earth realm with. So while I was looking at that, I had these questions, but I also knew we were dealing with a lot of this in our family, uh, my immediate family. But let's talk about what family is. We come here and we so, a lot of us spend so much time in church and we talk about this spiritual side of us that we're here to, uh, we're spiritual beings here to have this natural experience. But I think we really push that spiritual side of us so far to the back. And all we focus on is this, in, this immediate thing that we can see, our physical DNA, those people that look like us, those people that live in our house with us. But I'm going to tell you, even on the physical side, family is more than what you think it is. So what's family? We have this biological family. And that's going to be comprised of our mom, dad, sisters, brothers, cousins, aunts, uncles, grandparents, the biological. You're going to also have those that are going to be related by law or by marriage. So those that are being wedded into the family, your in-laws, those that are being adopted into the family. We have friends and lovers that we are so close with that we do what? Engraft them into the family. And then we have this bottom category that a lot of people don't like to focus on. Those of us who have had, and you mothers that are doing this, I'm going to tell you, it's very crucial. You need to be honest with your children about who their real fathers are. You know, a lot of times we want to give dads a lot of grief about affairs or creating illegitimate children, but they had those children with, with some woman. And there are a lot of secrets that our families are holding on to, of secret lovers that they had, and secret families, and um, illegitimate children that came from some of your love affairs and some of the children that you either abandoned or gave up. Guys, this still creates karmic debt that has to be worked out. Why? Based upon your secret lovers and your secret families, you don't think you operate as a mother or a father differently with your children? Why? Because you want to keep that secret hidden up. Hidden. Is it be because you're afraid you'll be judged or be seen in a different way. I, I don't know your motive for doing those things, but guys, it creates karmic debt. And those people now that you created these relationships with have now been what? Grafted into your family. There's also one other category that I didn't put in here. Let's say um, you have a family member, a biological family member, or an adopted family member, or somebody's married in by law that suffered uh, a rape. Whether you even know it or not, the rapist now is engrafted into this family line. Why? Because how this woman now lives her life, how she operates in this world has been impacted by this incident. Whether we're silent about it, whether we're trying to keep it under the rug, these things have to be dealt with. So I want to talk about a scripture. I think it's in, oh, let's see my scripture reference here. Luke 8. We have a reference of Jesus. He's out and about teaching the people. And there's a large crowd around him. And all of a sudden, some of his disciples come up to him and they're like, Jesus, your mom, your brothers, they're looking for you. And in the midst of that, Jesus stops and he says, who's my mother? Who's my brother? But these 
that are here in front of me. These are what's seeking to do the will of the Father. What Jesus was letting them know, family is spiritual, and that had his mother and his brothers, those natural ones that they're referring to, been a part of this spiritual DNA, they would be where? Right here where the people were, eager to learn about the things of the Father. So guys, have you identified who your spiritual family is? In the, in the scriptural world, in the religious world, in biblical terms, they call a lot of what we see here generational curses. In the world of psychology, they call it pathology. But in any event, if it's not dealt with, it's going to continue passing down generation after generation until someone will be bold enough, brave enough to answer the call to do what? The work of forgiveness, to for forgive this. While my mother may not quite answer me on the questions that I put before her, I don't have the benefit now, and I haven't had the benefit of my grand maternal grandmother for a long time to go back to get those questions. Why? Because that's the person who raised my mother. I didn't have the benefit of that. My daughter, when she wanted to know who her father was, whatever he had done to me had nothing to do with, that was my situation with him. She still had a right to know I, in turn, undertook a court battle that lasted for over two years. And she saw the fight that I went through to make this connection happen. Now, the end result, is he a part of her life today? No. She saw the fight. She was able to address him face to face and ask some of her questions and deal with it. And then after the fact, I did what? Walked her, talked her through this process of forgiveness that now she will have the opportunity to do at this young stage of her life and not carry on like I did and like most of us are doing, pains and hurts from our childhood 10, 20, 30 years into our future that what will create toxic environments in our homes. So single mothers, if you are out here raising your daughters without a support system, without her father in her life, do know this is purposeful. But I also want you to know that you are not alone. And, and what do I mean when I say that you are not alone? I'm trying to find this scripture reference, two of them actually. Hebrews 12 talks about this great cloud of witnesses uh, that have gone before us. I remember at one point I was feeling so low, like why me? Like why did this happen to me? Well, because Spirit knew that I was willing to do what? Willing to do this hard work of forgiveness because once you start doing this, you're going to have to now what? Speak these things that people have wanted to keep silent for so long. They want to keep secret the incest, the molestation. I know we don't like talking about those things, guys, but if you don't, they're going to keep passing through your, through your spiritual bloodline, through your physical bloodline. Why? Somebody has to speak these things. These secrets kill. And you think because you don't speak them that they won't continue forth. The karmic debt has to be paid. I knew I wanted mine to stop with me. But in order for it to also stop with me, what had to come through me? A new line birthing what a new way. Some of us want to hold on to the old, thinking that we'll, we'll fake these relationships, like, oh, I've forgiven and I can whatever. Sometimes you have to let go of these things, guys. Let go of the past when you forgive so that what you can start a new way. So I recall when I began to speak on these things, that I endured in my childhood, the physical abuse, the sexual abuse, the emotional abuse. Because my family was still such a large part in the church, it was easier for them to isolate me than to have to deal with these issues. So I took that on. I forgave it. There are still elements and, and things that are unraveling. I'm continuing to forgive. I now walk my daughter through the process of forgiveness so that, again, at this early age, she won't create toxicity in her life that will draw to her painful situations. But I also am aware that I have a cloud of witnesses that have gone before me. What? People in my spiritual family that I've never met, that are in the spiritual realm, cheering me on, that are my support system, and that we have these angels, guys, that we can call upon. How do I know that? I'll use another scriptural references. Uh, 2 Kings 6.17 we have this issue of Elijah. And they, uh, his servant felt like they were just overtaken with the people that were coming to war against them. Elijah 
spoke to his servant and basically told him, like, hey, chill out, got this. But he wasn't at ease with it. And all of a sudden, Elijah prayed to God and said, would you open his eyes and allow him to see that those who are with us, for us, are greater than those who have come against us. And God opened up and allowed him to see chariots of angels lined up ready to fight on their behalf. Guys, you are not alone. I know it feels like it. Call upon your spirit and your angels for the assistance that you need. When Jesus was being tempted in the wilderness and after he withstood and didn't give in, what immediately happened? Angels came to minister unto him. You're on a special assignment. You're here to birth. You have birthed someone into, from the spirit realm into the natural realm who's going to do what? Start a new family legacy. Guys, evil is not an act. It's a legacy. And when we don't confess it, when we don't acknowledge it, when we don't heal it, again, as I said, it's going to keep passing through. But in order for God to do a new thing, someone has to come forward from the spirit realm into the natural realm to take on that assignment. So guys, I hope that uh, this was helpful for you. I don't want to make it so long of a video. Um, if you desire to talk about some of these things on a more personal and in-depth uh, level, do know that I have a website, overcomerswithourword.com. And if you would like to book some time, we can talk through some of these family dynamics and issues. We can Skype or email, however you choose, sir, or telephone. Um, but I want to give you one last way of how I knew my daughter was really here to start a new thing with me with our family line because I had had such a in my opinion horrible childhood with all the abuse I had endured I just vowed I wasn't going to have children so in my marriage in my 20s I was married to a guy that was 10 years older than me and he had already had a family before daughters and I thought well surely I could convince him that that was enough that we didn't have to have our own children, but I could parent, you know, be a second mother to his daughters. But eventually he wanted kids. And as I've done in my past, when guys got that close and I began to think of this concept of family, fear would always set in, what if I won't be a good mother? What if I will repeat uh, some of the parenting um, mistakes or just how I was parented? What if I will pass that on? And I would always self-sabotage and the relationship would come to an end. When I got with my daughter's father and he began to push this issue of marriage and children, I had opened up my heart to him. And by this time, I guess I had convinced myself that things would be different. I've always loved children. I actually wanted to teach when I was younger. Um, I thought it would be different. Not so. In my fifth month of pregnancy, he abandoned me and her and things I just don't care to go into. I had to undertake the hard work of forgiveness. Because I realized that most of the decisions I had been making in my life, I had been drawing these things to me from my place of pain. Because I was in so much pain, I couldn't see when someone was coming at me with an intent to hurt me because I was looking for what? Help outside of myself. Healing outside of myself. Guys, healing is an inside job. We're going to have to do the forgiveness. And then when we do, we're able to pass that, what, that new thing on to our children that they can now what walk in forgiveness, that they don't sit in the toxicity of the pain that's been created in their life. They can see it, heal it, send it on its way. So I got my birth certificate a couple of months ago. I had never seen it, just wanted to look at some things. And I'll tell you the similarities that I found between me and my daughter. And because this is not a video on numerology, I'll have to do a separate video on that. I began to notice parallels. My daughter and I both have the same life number, number eight. I'll go into that on, number, on another video, the significance of eight. We were also born nine minutes apart. In numerology, the numbers are from zero to nine. Nine is always the number of endings beginning a new cycle. We were born nine minutes apart. It was time for this debt to be paid and end and then a new beginning. We were also born on the same day, Saturday. And we we're also both fire signs. I'm an Aries, she's a Sagittarius. We are fearless. We are warriors. We are assertive. We take on these challenges. We will fight for a cause. Uh, so I begin to look at all these parallels and to know that 
This needed to stop with me and my mother through my process of forgiveness, but through my daughter coming into the earth realm, now a new generation, a new legacy of healing was started in our family legacy. It was through my pain that I became healed and whole. So guys, again, thank you for your time, your attention. I know this has been a little bit of a long video. I was trying to make it as concise as I can, but it's so much that I could share with you. Do know again, spirit wants us to master this life. Spirit wants us to succeed and to become whole. He wants us to overcome. So I hope it resonates with you. Give me a like, give me some comments. But again, if you like to talk, guys, I'm here for you. You're on a special assignment. You have support. I'm in it with you. I'll see you back soon, guys. Take care. Bye.